Good morning, LT, and welcome back to Vanguard TV. I'm Daniel Price. And I'm Faith Loris. In today's episode, we'll discuss NNDCC, Valentine's Day, Winter Guard, and much more. Valentine's Day is tomorrow, which means it's a time when many students go on dates with friends or significant others. Blakely Jamieson went around LT to discover what ideas students have for affordable date options. Each year on February 14th, many friends and couples alike try to find ways to spend time with each other to celebrate the holiday that emphasizes love and affection. Though going to fancy dinners and purchasing gifts can be expensive, there are numerous affordable date ideas for couples on a budget. My husband and I will just go grab food and make like a little picnic. Driving around if you have a car, that's fun. Activities such as going on a walk in the park and having a picnic lunch or a coffee day are some ways to spend quality time with loved ones this Valentine's Day. There are many other alternatives to show love without having to empty your pockets. I plan to buy my favorite chocolate and I'm gonna take it home and eat all of it by myself. I'm going on a little romantic date with my friend Bryce. Additional examples include bowling, going to the movies, and visiting stores in the mall or other shops throughout the area to make the most of this eventful day. Regardless of how one chooses to celebrate or not celebrate this annual holiday, it is not necessary to break the bank when spending time with loved ones. I'm Blakely Jamison reporting for Vanguard TV. The National Navy Defense Cadet Corps, also known as the JROTC, was established last year at Lebanon Trail. Jacob Chang has more on the basics of the program, as well as the benefits it provides to students who participate. FIC's National Navy Defense Cadet Corps program was formed last year to provide the district with its own military program for students. The program's curriculum is identical to that of any other Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps program throughout America, the only difference between the NNDCC and the JROTC is that the NNDCC is funded by the FISD instead of the Department of Defense. Navy National Defense Cadet Corps, by all intents and purposes, the same thing. Um, we wear the same uniform. We compete against other junior ROTCs all throughout the state. Uh, we just, all the funding is Frisco ISD. The JROTC focuses on teaching cadets about how the Navy operates, as well as lessons in areas such as leadership, ethics, and physical fitness. Students who wish to learn more about the program or how to become participants can contact Major Billings or visit the Frisco IC Navy webpage at friscoic.org slash department slash Navy. I'm Jacob Chang, reporting for Vanguard TV. Lebanon Trail's Winter Guard team has been putting in hours of practice in order to ensure that they are in prime form in all of their performances. Dean Sainju spotlights the group of students and how they are preparing for their upcoming competitions. Since December, Lebanon Trail's Color Guard has been working hard to prepare for their competition season. Their main goal for this season is to grow their team's camaraderie and place once again this year. So this year our performance is about autumn and leaves. It's called a soft place to land. So you see like we have bean bags all around the floor. They're actually supposed to represent piles of leaves that the performers get to fall into. So it's just kind of that feeling of fall, autumn, excitement, and just free falling into piles of leaves. There's this one part when sabers, we fall into the bean bag after a toss. This is my first year on saber. I've never been on it before. So being part of the experience helps me grow as a member and just to help other people. My favorite part about our performance is is the saber part it's kind of challenging given I've never been like a key saber and stuff like that so as being my last year I'm excited to see the choreography that our coaches have written for us. While they faced multiple challenges while practicing for their competition they've learned to adapt and grow from any situation that arises. One of those obstacles includes the amount of time required of students throughout the week for practice. Usually our practices are two days a week from 6 to 9 and sometimes also Saturday from 12 to 8, but those don't give us enough time to work as a team completely and overall like simplify everything to make it all better. But overall we're doing like really, really well for it being only our second competition. Their next performance is on February 17th at North Forney High School. I'm Dean Sainju reporting for Vanguard TV. After a frozen pause of winter sports, LT athletes are back in the swing of things as some teams move closer to playoffs while others compete in early matches and scrimmages of their seasons. Ethan Wu highlights the achievements of winter sports and the onset of some of Lebanon Trail's spring sports.
Welcome to the latest edition of Blazer Sports Updates. As the seasons roll on after a brief pause due to freezing conditions, our athletes have returned and performed at an unparalleled level, earning achievement after achievement. The girls basketball team continues to perform exceptionally well in the current season, taking on some tough opponents. They most recently won against the Centennial Titans with a final score of 54-36 on their senior night game last Tuesday. The Blizzards are currently ranked at number 3 in district play, boasting a record of 20 wins and 11 losses as they head to their first playoff game in LT history tonight at 7pm against the Lone Star Rangers at Panther Creek High School. The boys basketball team has had a tough season so far, with an 11 loss streak recently. However, the team is not discouraged and remains determined to turn the season around. In their last game against the Centennial Titans, the Blazers put up a tough fight but came up short with a final score of 60-44. The team is now focusing on the next challenge, their senior night home game against the Emerson Mavericks Tuesday at 8pm. Moving on to the field, the boys' soccer team has had a tough season so far, with victories against some strong opponents, such as the Copres Cove Bulldogs, with a final score of 4-0. However, mixed in with the triumphs are defeats against the Centennial Titans, and most recently, the Independence Knights on their senior night game last Friday with a close score of 2-1. Their current record is 4 wins, 9 losses, and 2 ties. This week, the boys will be facing off against the Liberty Redhawks in a home game Tuesday at 7.30pm, and against the Memorial Warriors Thursday at 7.15pm. The girls' soccer team has had a balanced season so far, with victories against strong opponents such as Emerson, Heritage, and Centennial. Their recent 5-win streak was unfortunately halted by a defeat against the Independence Knights on their senior night game last Friday, with a final score of 3-1. Their current record is 5 wins, 6 losses, and 1 tie. This week, they will face off against the Liberty Redhawks in an away game Tuesday at 5.30pm. <laughs> Softball, baseball, and track season have all officially begun as the Blazers played their first games in their past few weeks. Softball played their most recent game against the Creekview Mustangs last Saturday. While no official scores are available to the public, the team is actively training and preparing for the season. This week, the Blazers will face off against the Sherman Bearcats in a home game on Tuesday at 7pm and will also participate in the Salina Softball Tournament starting Thursday against a to-be-determined opponent. <laughs> Baseball played their first game on February 4th and their most recent game against the Newman Smith Trojans last Saturday. No official scores have been released to the public, but the team trains on for the next games this week in away games against the Lake Dallas Falcons today at 1pm and the Panther Creek Panthers Friday at 5pm. The LT track and field team had their first meet at Prosper High School, competing against Heritage and Prosper in various activities such as long jump, high jump, various sprints, and mile runs. And last but not least, moving on to district and regional achievements, our swim team has been busy making a splash this season. The athletes have completed district and regional competitions, and the girls qualified for the Texas State Swim Championship that will take place at the Lee and Joe Jameo Texas Swimming Center in Austin, Texas, from February 17th to February 18th. Congratulations to Coach Graves and the swim team. Wrestling has recently completed both district and regional championships. Janaya Beza and August Shute both earned regional championships for their respective divisions. Ava Hampton was regional runner-up. Corbin Lyle placed third. DeJuan Hollins placed fourth. And Aisha Franks placed sixth for their respective divisions as well. Congratulations to Coach Trevino, Coach Kitos, and the wrestling team. I'm Ethan Wu reporting for Vanguard TV. Lebanon trails a diverse and independent campus with students and staff members who use creative ways to portray the school's unique qualities. One recent example is the addition of the new art wall that has been placed in hallways throughout the campus. Vigane Kuchipudi has more on how this form of artistic expression makes a significant impact at LT. Over the past few weeks, LT has made many changes around the school. One of the distinct changes being the new wall art across the school. There are painted quotations, pictures, and symbols of Lebanon Trail on the blank walls. I think the purpose is to also add some glam and color to like a boring white wall. To be According to Dr. Deuce, the purpose of the wall art is to incorporate accomplishments made by previous alumni. I feel like the purpose of the wall art is to like bring students together and like remind them that we're all like part of a community at LT. It inspired current students to try more activities and pursue what they're interested in. Give people motivation or like commemorate the past students, but personally I just find it just really pretty. The art symbolizes unique style and gives emphasis that LT is a diverse and independent school. I think it looks cool, specifically the newest one that we just got. That one's not bad. This betters our school by incorporating creativity with school spirit and by using the school's colors. 
the art is displayed through the school in various places. I love the wall art. It's an awesome addition to the hallways and it brings a burst of color. The green and gold that are used in the wall art are to represent LT's color overall to give the students an inspiration to become as a community. Whether it's in the fine arts hallway or the academic hallway, you can see the different wall art displayed throughout the school. I'm Megana Kuchipudi reporting for Vanguard TV. Thank you for watching Vanguard TV. I'm Daniel Price. And I'm Faith Dolores. Blaze, Blaze it, LT. LT.